Hey, so Zoom now tells you recording in progress when you start recording. I didn't know that. Okay, so Armand here with your forecast for the week of May 23rd through the 30th of 2021. Before we go any further, a couple of shout outs. The first is to Adam Bernstein over at the Medium Channel. He calls it the Medium Channel, but I think it's very well done. Uh, he gives weekly tarot forecasts at 11 a.m. on Sunday, but you can watch, you know, you can watch them later on as well. And there's usually something else going on during the week. He does live mediumship events. He does all kinds of stuff. It's really cool. The meditations and things like that. Check out the Medium channel. And the second shout out is for me. I have a new channel that uh, Natalie Delahaye and I are doing as a podcast in interview style. It is called Integrated Minds. Both of these will be on the bottom of the thing, so you don't have to think about it. Uh, you know, I put them in the little description. They're both YouTube channels, so you can check them out. Uh, Integrated Minds, we do interviews. We've done two. We've got two out there. We have one with Andy Workman, uh, who's a hypnotherapist and a therapist. And we have one with Tammy Bronstein, who is a medical herbologist. Really cool interviews, really cool people. So check that out. All right, enough advertisement. Let's, uh, let's get down to the week. Well, you know, I say that because here it is, it's, it's the Saturn station on Sunday. And Saturn stations had that sort of heavy watch what you say kind of energy, kind of makes you a little bit uh, cautious. Coming right after a Mercury-Neptune square yesterday on Saturday, that was a little bit more, a little bit more pliable with the truth. And we also had a Sun-Jupiter square on Friday. So, you know, the sort of high flying stuff. And then the Saturn station kind of brings us back down to earth. It's good to come back down to earth, I suppose. It's pretty good. And we could use a little bit of it this week. The next big event that we have is on Wednesday. It is a lunar eclipse. It's a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Sagittarius. And it's a south node eclipse with the, well, with the moon on the south node. And so what we see with a south node eclipse in Sagittarius is a little bit of a tendency towards maybe some hyperbole, people sort of uh, relying on their beliefs as opposed to the facts. The facts are Gemini, that's where the north node is. Or maybe it's a tension between the two with the sun and Gemini on the north node and the moon illuminated out in Sagittarius on the south node. Maybe it's all about, you know, sorting through what's a fact and what's a belief. We, you know, we certainly have a lot of polemics. We certainly have a lot of uh, division. And a lot of that comes from being very belief-based. Well, nothing wrong with adding together a whole bunch of facts and saying, well, this is, this is the way things are. Then you've got a belief. But sometimes your beliefs need to change. Sometimes the facts are wrong. And with Mercury in the shadow of his retrograde, the facts may be wrong. And with Mercury having squared Neptune, the facts may be wrong. And actually, Mercury is going to square Neptune three times before the retrograde, during the retrograde, and after the retrograde should be a real mess. Okay, so that happens. Mercury stations to retrograde on the 29th, which is, if I'm not mistaken, would be on Saturday. So these are the three big events of the week. And the first two, the Saturn station and the eclipse, certainly give us a little bit of a heavier kind of feel to things. I'll tell you, they both share this. They tell you what's important, but they probably give it to you in the wrong proportions. It's like you're just seeing too much of it. It's the fisheye mirror, as I always say. You're seeing too much of it. It's in your face, you know? So you, yeah, that's something to pay attention to, but no, it's probably not the crisis that you perceive it to be. Again, especially with Mercury stationing to retrograde, we might be going off on information that is inaccurate, misinformation, disinformation, sometimes some just plain untruths, but probably, but even, even just, you know, buying a good story, you know, who needs facts when you got a good story? So uh, we'll see people a little bit hopped up this week with the eclipse, any full moon, but an eclipse especially. People get a little bit overly, uh, overly excited. Now, this energy may or may not be really relevant for you personally. 
it could sort of miss you. And of course, you know, an enlightened, an enlightened being such as yourself could probably handle it anyway, even if it does land on you. But keep in mind that you'll be around people who may not handle the energy quite as well. So if you find yourself getting a little reactive to others, it's a good idea to step back and, you know, calm down a bit. I suppose that's always good advice, but, you know, uh, it's hard to do, isn't it? But it's always it's always relevant and good advice. But I think what happens quite frequently with eclipses is that it's uh you have to, <laughs> it's advice that you may have to use a little bit more this week than you would at other times. We're in the midst of a period that's going to go through about the middle of June, where we're going to have a lot of this stuff happening. And again, the fact that Mercury is in slippery uh, aspect to Neptune really suggests that we may be a little bit, uh, we, we may be working on, <laughs> there might be a magnet next to the compass. We might not really have a clear idea of exactly where we are or where we're going. So it's a great time. This is really a great time for meditation. It is a great time for sort of stepping back from things and, you know, getting lost in a fantasy. You know, I tell you this every so often, right? This is the get lost in a fantasy, listen to music, be creative. And, and creative, not like you're going to have to do something with it. Creative, like you're just having fun doing something. It's a good time to play. It's a, good time. It's a great, you know, all this Gemini energy is a great time for games word games, you know, Scrabble, but even just board games and things like that. It's a great time for a little bit of friendly competition and so on. Oh, uh, you know, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you have reasonably good weather, if you're not getting soaked over in uh, the UK or in Ireland, if you're not getting soaked, it might be a nice idea to go for a walk, get a little bit of time in nature or something along those lines. You know, just generally speaking, it's a little bit less of a push forward at full uh, at full speed type of thing. Again, you're getting kind of mixed messages. Eclipses are hard to sit, well, total, uh, a lunar eclipse is hard to sit out on the sidelines. So especially at midweek, you know, active kind of energy. Be active, just, you know, be selective. And again, you know, whatever you wanna do, whatever you're going forward with, it's fine. It doesn't matter that Mercury is retrograde, there's an eclipse and stuff like that. It, it doesn't matter. But just keep in mind that when you start to see that activity or reactivity building, then you need to, uh, you need to, well, you could step back or you could freak out. You could freak out if you want, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it's okay, you know, if you don't. You don't wind up in you don't wind up in the pokey or anything like that. If you, know, if you don't wind up causing a lot of trouble with with your loved ones, then uh, sometimes a little freak out is kind of okay. But you know, probably probably better to avoid it. All right, that's a lot of saying the same thing. I must be trying to get a message across or something like that. Let's see if the Zoom lady will say to that it is time to stop recording.